It may be an imperfect football team, but uh, where are the perfect football teams? But uh, the most important thing for Miami at this stage of the season is we're headed toward November, and the record is still flawless as they look for an ACC Coastal Division Championship and more. We bring in Alonzo129. You can catch him on YouTube, and I suggest it highly. Encourage you to get on there, subscribe to his YouTube channel for the best in Miami football coverage. Alonzo, how you doing today? I'm good. I'm good, Mark. I'm, I'm excited about another another great Saturday in college football, especially my Miami Hurricane. So I'm good. How are you doing, man? I'm doing just fine. I appreciate it. Uh, this is great when you come on here and uh, help uh, the, the fan base that uh, loves Miami football that checks out my channel with a little uh, different perspective and insight on this. So this is good stuff. Uh, when we look at uh, the Canes coming off two very narrow wins against Syracuse last week at Georgia Tech, that was a thriller, 25-24. Uh, again, they're they're getting the things uh, that they need in place in the fourth quarter to get the job done, but uh, maybe they could make it a little easier this weekend. They're supposed to, so I hope the college football is not too good for you and, and the Miami fan base because this should be a pretty easy one. I don't know. <laughs> we haven't <laughs> we haven't had an easy one yet this year, really. So, um, very, very, very happy to be six and zero. Very excited about that. But you know, as a columnist, you 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 kind of, especially when you're covering a certain team, you kind of you know you have to read everything. You have to look at everything. So, um, I know what North Carolina is, and they're not that good this year. They probably won't be good for another couple of years with everything they went through. And we should dominate this game. But we haven't yet, and you can't look past an opponent. So I would love to see us dominate, especially on the offense side of the ball. We have, we have to see when we get there. We have to see tomorrow. I'm, I'm not so confident that we'll dominate, but especially with, the, with three nail biters back to back to back, um, Florida State, Georgia Tech, and then Syracuse last week. You know, even though all three of those teams are better than North Carolina, North Carolina is only like a year or two removed from being a very, very dangerous team. So we have to, um, we have to see what happens when we get there tomorrow. Alonzo, you know how it works when your team is facing a team that they should handle. So you've got to kind of evaluate the team a little bit differently this week. And again, we know it's college football and anything can happen. So I'm not going to be shocked if it's a one score game in the fourth quarter. Most likely it's not going to be. And let's say it's one of those games where Miami comes out with a 45 to 14 win. Uh, you being an astute college football guy, you're going to be looking for certain keys, regardless of it being a 30 or 35 point margin, possibly, uh, of what you're looking to see out of Miami to get them set for Virginia Tech. And what would those things be? First of all, um, I like to see the offense start fast. And not just start fast, keep the pace up. Um, I've, got, I've, gotten, I've gotten into some conversations with some of the guys on my channel, and they say, you know, the defense is giving up a lot of run plays, which we are. We're getting gashed on defense. Our defense of run game is not that good right now. But I also kind of contribute that to being on the field a lot. So when you're on the field a lot, you kind of wear down a lot. So I would like to see us give our defense a, a break because our defense isn't giving up many points at all. But they're, they're, they're sustaining drives against us, and I think that's because of fatigue and because of the defense being out there. So I would love to see the offense actually carry a game for, for the first time this year, just carry a game and see if they can dominate a game and win a game for the, for, for the, for the university. That's what I'm looking for this week. Alonzo, I know you also are uh, have a keen eye on the play calling. So you've uh, expressed some thoughts and some concerns about the play calling in the past, and you've been very specific. Some people complain about play calling, and it's not necessarily about the play calling. It's about the execution of the plays. But for you, you you've honed in on some specific situations in which you would have liked to have seen it make a lot more sense in terms of what the defense is playing, what the game situation is. So... What are you looking for tomorrow? Well, last week he was actually pretty good on the play call, and it was a lot of drop balls. He actually did get the ball to the tight ends a lot more. Amon Richards dropped a few passes, so did other, a few other receivers. But I would like to see the offense not be so predictable. I would like to see us line up in our formation a few times and run the ball instead of running the ball at the shotgun all the time. Um, get up and, and, and do smash mouth. Um, I would also like to see him rotate running backs, you know, um, Travis Homer is going to get destroyed if we continue to just use him right now. So you have to get Trayon Gray in there. Um, you have to do a couple sweeps or uh, uh, hand the ball to the tight end sometimes. 
But you just can't be so predictable that, you know what I'm saying, when you're in shotgun and it's always an RPO. It can't always be an RPO. Sometimes you have to line the ball up and run it. Um, a few play action passes out of, out of the eye formation. I haven't seen any of those at all this year. So just think, I'm not saying we had to run them, but I just can't remember seeing play actions and, and things like that. So it's like defenses can, can key in on exactly what you're doing because they know exactly what you're doing because you're being so predictable. So for the most part, just stop being so predictable and open the playbook up a little more. Hey, Alonso, just as a college football fan who's got no investment in this game, neutral uh, perspective on watching Miami, North Carolina in particular, I would love to see some of the things you're talking about because I'm just an old school football fan who is sick of seeing every game look the same. Every game looks the same. Uh, everybody's in the spread. Everybody's running the RPO. Almost everybody. It's just across the board. And man, to see a fullback, to see a true tight end, to see... Uh, two backs in the in the uh, backfield to see some pro formations and even watching the NFL nowadays uh, the the college game has really influenced the NFL man I would love to see you know back in the day back when we were watching football in the 80s and 90s it was fun to watch a 45 42 game because you didn't get to see those every week there weren't like 10 of them a week so it was exciting like this is different but now the 45 42 game for me, isn't anything exciting, man. I want to see defensive backs contest the passes in the backfield. I want to see wide receivers not just running wild in the secondary wide open and 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 actually not see blown coverages and see when an offense is executing, it's executing not because guys are wide open, but because the quarterbacks are throwing into tight windows, receivers are out fighting the DB for the ball, and there's really offensive execution as opposed to just defensive, <laughs> just absence out there. And that's actually one thing I can give Coach Ron Dugan is his wide receivers block. They're probably the best set of in the nation for the last two years. They block, they hold their blocks, they block downfield. Um, I don't have a real big problem with the spread. I actually liked it for, for, for Miami a couple of years back. But you just can't always line up in that formation. This is what makes Alabama great. This is what makes Clemson great. Clemson has been great for a few years just because they've been able to um, mix it up on offense. You know, um, they back to back national championships, um, been to two back to back national championship games, should have won the first, won the second. And you don't know what they're throwing at you from week in to week out. Alabama, you know exactly what they're throwing at you from week in to week out. But they also get tight ends and receivers involved in the game. Um, you have to kind of wear teams down. There's, it's, it's almost a reason why. It's, Alabama's always there because they specifically are on defense, but their, their offensive game plan, he had to get more creative when he hired um, – why am I forgetting the guy's name from, from USC and Tennessee? Ah, we talking about Lane I Kiffin? I his name right now. Lane Kiffin, which is part of the reason why he hired Lane Kiffin um, a couple years back, was to, to make the offense not be so predictable. And like I said, that's how, that's my problem with the team. I, I, I keep hearing people harp on, you know, defense giving up run plays. They are, but they're not giving up points. I mean, they're, they're 19, 20, and 20. They're not giving up points at all. When you can hold teams to 20, 21 points a game, you should win every game. There's, I mean, that's an end of whether you're in college or NFL. If you can hold teams to 21 points a game, you should win every game. But the defense is getting wore down, and – the only way we can change that is for the offense to sustain some drives and score some points. And then the defense could be a little bit more fresh and be ready to hold it down in the fourth quarter. Right now, we just, we're on the field a little too much on the defense side of the football.